Hey friend, last video we talked about plosives. Check it out if you haven't already. Today we dive into fricatives. Hi, I'm Kate Lachine. I'm a voice and dialect coach with a passion for health and wellness. You can learn more about me at katelachine.com and if you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe below. Let's get started. Just like the name plosive suggests that those sounds are like tiny little explosions, the word fricative is also descriptive of the eight sounds it represents. Rather than two articulators fully stopping and then releasing the airflow in a plosive, like a uh, buh, the two articulators in a fricative touch lightly and the air flows through and around them, creating a sort of friction, hence fricative. One really obvious way you could determine whether you're dealing with a fricative or a plosive is sustainability. And I'm not talking about how much water it takes to produce a fricative, although it is always good to be hydrated. But you can't sustain a plosive, whereas you can sustain a fricative. Try sustaining a Just doesn't work. But you can sustain a fricative for as long as you have air. See what I mean? One way plosives and fricatives are similar is that they both come in voiced and voiceless pairings. And the cool thing about fricatives is you can alternate between both sounds in a pair with just turning your voice on and off and changing nothing else. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Since I was vving a moment ago, let's start off with the labiodental fricatives, or what you'll recognize as V and F. They're called labiodental because you need one lip, your bottom lip, and your upper teeth to create the sounds. Now, if you put too much pressure on your lip with your teeth, well, then you're kind of treating a fricative like a plosive, and that's just not how they work. You'll end up stopping the sound altogether. The next pair of sounds are the alveolar fricatives, and you'll likely recognize these as S and Z, or S and Z. Now, these are made by the tongue, the blade of the tongue, which is just behind the tip, creating a sort of channel, kind of curving up against your alveolar ridge, which is that gum ridge above your upper teeth. Now, the way my teeth are constructed, they are touching, they're coming together as I create my S and Z sounds. S but they're not actually part of making the sound. Your teeth may also be touching, but I promise you it's the tongue and the alveolar ridge that creates the shape that obstructs the airflow just right. These next two pairs use symbols you may recognize from other sources or you may not know at all. The dental fricatives, called that because your tongue protrudes through your teeth, are your TH sounds, th and th. The voiceless version is called the th theta, which you may recognize from the Greek alphabet, and the other version, the voiced version, is called the ev, which is a symbol that we see in Old English, like the epic poem Beowulf. So you may have seen this in like a literature or a poetry class. Finally, we have the esh and the ej, the names of which pretty much sum up the sounds that they make. Esh as in wish or shirt, ej as in measure or garage. And now the edge is a very French sound, and so you might recognize it in words that we've adopted from the French language, such as déjà vu or bourgeois. These sounds are also made with the tongue just behind the alveolar ridge, and so we call these consonants post-alveolar fricatives. And as promised, you can prove to yourself that each pair is made the exact same way, just that one is voiceless and one is voiced. So place a hand on the larynx and let's give it a try. Finally, here are a couple articulation drills that will really help you hone your skills and clarity. As with most articulation drills, the point is to get clarity first and then speed second, such as and so on. Those ought to keep you busy for a while. 